Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. So our next uh, speaker will be uh, Stefan van der Berg. Uh, who is uh, also a cryptographer at uh, TNO. So uh, Stefan studied at the University of Eindhoven and uh, graduated with uh, both a master's in information security technology and embedded system. Currently, Stefan works as a scientist in the Department of Applied Cryptography and Quantum Algorithms at TNO. So that is very suitable for this conference. And uh, his work focuses on development of various previous enhancing techniques, technologies, post-quantum cryptography solutions, and quantum applications. So we're looking forward to hear about using quantum safe hybrid certificates for signing documents. Welcome, Stefan. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm going to skip the slides because that's way too generic for. Uh, TNO. Um, yeah, I will be talking about um, hybrid PDF signatures, um, but I will first start with a broad overview, and then I'll start to dive a bit deeper. Um, so bear with me, and if there are any questions come up, please raise your hand, and I'll um, answer them just throughout the presentation. You don't need to wait till the end. Um, so let's get started. Um, first off, we live in a very interconnected world where there's a lot of collaboration and many people collaborate to innovate and to progress. One of those occasions is this one here today. And all those collaborations are based on trust. And that trust is usually um, a feeling, but sometimes a contract supplements it. And that's one of the points that I want to talk about because contracts are the basis for legal agreements. And those legal agreements can be valid for a really long time. For example, my contract with TNO is not signed with a physical signature anymore. It's a digital signature. And yesterday there was also a talk, um, I'm not sure from who anymore, um, by you, okay, <laughs> about a, a bank who has to um, sign uh, a bunch of documents and they will run into issues when they have to um, transition that to the post-quantum um, period. Um, and that's the second thing that's, uh, well, clear to most of you. Through all the collaborations and the innovation, we've also created a really nice quantum computer which can do many amazing things, as you will know. One of them is factorizing numbers. And that's kind of the topic of this entire, well, uh, event. The threads of that to the classical cryptography. And there have been many, many talks about having to transition, and yes, I'm gonna mention it again. Um, and yes, um, I want to point this towards one specific use case. And that's not TLS or uh, the web in this case. It's more focused on those contacts that we've just talked about. So that's also the impact that we um, have by the quantum computer in this talk, is that with the quantum computer, you can recalculate the signatures, and that way you can forge a contract. And that loses the trust that you have in those collaborations. And the trust is really important. Because if something happens, a contract is usually where the people fall back to. If they go to court, it's not my word against yours, it's what we've signed on paper. That's the most important part. And if somebody can recalculate the signature, they can basically change the fingerprint of you. And, well, there are many solutions that you could try to fix this. And one of them is reissuing all contracts with a post-quantum secure signature. But that's gonna be a lot of work. 
you could also try to transition to post-quantum cryptography as soon as possible. And as we've seen today, there um, is a handbook for that, um, which was created by the IVD, CVE, and Teno, and it tries to help companies transition to post-quantum crypto. And there are many different steps and things to highlight in there. Um, but the two points that I want to extract from it are first off the crypto agility, where you um, try to change the cryptographic uh, algorithms with minimal effort. But I also want to highlight one specific algorithm, uh, asymmetric cryptography strategy, um, which is the hybrid solution, where you combine both the classical and the post-quantum secure algorithm. And um, yeah, um, and I'll, there are many combinations that are possible, um, and there are many different forms that you can use. I believe Jan will be talking about more of them later. Um, I have put two here on the slides. Um, one of them is Catalyst, and the other one is Composite. Um, there are two different techniques that they are using within certificates um, to um, apply hybrid solutions. Um, with Catalyst, you have a uh, certificate which has a critical algorithm, but in the extension it also has a, uh, another algorithm, and you can choose any one you like. And in our case, we will be choosing a post-quantum secure algorithm. And the other solution is composite, where there will be multiple um, signatures or multiple keys and multiple algorithms inside the certificate. And I believe currently they are converging towards having two in the um, certificate. Um, it will at least be multiple, um, but it's still in draft and um, there's no adaptation yet. So that's the reason why we chose the Catalyst uh, solution uh, for us and the two images you see here uh, are the ways that they um, work on uh, on a document so if you want to sign a document <coughs> with catalyst you will be um, applying the critical signature on the document itself that's the light blue part around the dark blue part and the extension algorithm will be applied on the entire document, including the signature. With the composite approach, it would be different. And this is a design decision. Um, and in our case, we just followed the Catalyst approach because that one has been standardized. But with composite, you are only signing the document, but you're signing it twice. Once with the um, classical signature and once with the post-quantum secure signature and you are both appending it to the document. So these were the hybrid solutions that we have. How will we be applying those to the contracts? And most digital contracts are in PDF format. You know, that nice little program that most people use, Adobe Acrobat, yeah, that's the one. Um, those PDF uh, formats um, with a digital signature are uh, legally compliant. And to make them legally compliant across borders, there is a regulation. And within Europe, that's the EIDAS regulation. Um, just before the lunch break, there was a talk uh, by someone from the um, Dutch... Hmm? Yes. Um, and... She explained a bit about EIDIS and the other initiatives that they're running. And it was nice to see for me because um, one of the things that came out of it is uh, PADES. And PADES is a standard um, where they uh, explained how you should sign a PDF document. And that's also what we try to uh, use in our implementation. And the PADES standard has two ways to add a signature. You can either do it invisibly or you can do it visibly. And with invisibly, I mean that the information is still inside the PDF document. It's appended to it. 
but there's nothing visible, visible in your document. There's also a solution where you can actually insert an image of either your signature or Pikachu or whatever you want. Um, and they have um, different kinds of standards for different types of documents. Part of it, PADAS is specifically for uh, PDFs, but you also have XADES and CADES, and um, well, they are for XML or other types of documents. And they also have different profiles for different use cases. So if you want a timestamp or if it has to be uh, valid for a long period of time, then you can add uh, different options. Um, so that's the standard that we're trying to work with. But how does this look inside the PDF? So we're getting one step deeper. Well, to sign a PDF, you're gonna need some information. First off, you're gonna need the um, certificate, the digital identity of a person. And that's the part on the left of the image. Um, and next to that, you're gonna have a PDF document. And that document can be as long as you want, can be as short as you want, but we will be adding a piece of information in that. And that information is called the signature dictionary. And if you want to add a signature to a document, you're gonna be signing everything. However, you still have a choice to exclude some parts because it would be difficult to sign your own signature while you're signing a document. That's gonna be difficult. So we have a byte range which indicates which part of the document you're signing and that byte range is gonna be the entire document except for the part where you're putting your signature. Um, and that byte range is needed by the validator to know which information they need to make a message digest. And that's the second part. You're gonna need a message digest and you're gonna have to sign it. And for that, you're gonna use the certificate that you have. And both the certificate and the signed message digest and in this case, a timestamp, but you could add even more information based on the profile that you're using. If you do this once, you have the document with the critical signature. If you then do it again, but the PDF document that you're signing becomes the new one with the critical signature, then you're getting into the situation. Um, I'm gonna go back to slides here. Um, so if you do it once, you'll get the dark blue with the light blue part. If you then sign it again with the extension signature, then you get this final catalyst hybrid solution. Um, so once again, reiterating that you are signing the signature plus the document um, when you're applying the extension signature. Now, that's still theory. How do we do this in practice? Well, EIDAS, did create the uh, PADA standard, but they also provided an implementation of it, which is really nice of them. And that implementation is called DSS. Uh, it's the Digital Signature Service. Um, and the Digital Signature Service can do a bunch of things. I'm just specifically highlighting the PADA service, but they also have XADES um, and even more. Um, basically, anything that you need for signing it's in there. And we've taken that implementation that they have because it's open source, which is really nice. And we've extended it with our own Catalyst hybrid solution. And we've done that both for signing a document, but also for validating a document. And that's what today's um, demo explanation is about. So, we will have a, um, a certificate, and that certificate will be in a key store. Um, key stores are um, in the Java uh, language, the ones where you have your certificates, your keys, and everything. Um, in the key store, there will be a certificate looking like this, where we will have the subject, an issuer, 
uh, the type of public key that's used, and um, the message digest, which is SIG. SIG ALG is the algorithm you're using. And in the extension, you will have the post quantum secure solution. And that's the hybrid part. And in this case, we chose Falcon 512. Um, nothing really of thought behind it. It's just one of the implementations that Bouncy Castle provides. Because that's one thing you have to know. This is a Java uh, project. Um, so it was really nice that we could use the Bouncy Castle implementation. And last year they came with um, some post quantum uh, cryptography added in it. So that made our work, our, our work a bit easier. And in this image, you can see what's actually happening in the, um, in the DSS PADES signature. Um, and I have a few, I wanted to show you the actual demo, but sadly I was not allowed to plug my own laptop in. So you'll have to do with screencasts. Um, one thing to note, it's not the fanciest of all, like <laughs> I'm not Adobe, but I tried my best, okay? Um, so this is the basic view when you haven't loaded anything yet. So we're going to start off with if this works. Uh, with loading a document, and it's a really fancy document. It's one of the test documents that DSS Pardis has. And you cannot see anything on it yet. Um, this is one of those documents which has a invisible signature. Um, and in this case, a bunch of Hello World text. That's the same type. This looks more like it. Um, and now we're loading a key store. Uh, the key store is a P12 file, uh, which has uh, the certificate in it, but it also has the uh, keys in it, um, and then we can validate it. Um, it doesn't do much when you just press the validate button, um, but you can open a separate window where you can see the signatures that are embedded in the PDF document. Um, and in this case, you can see that there are two. And you can also get more information on those two signatures. Um, you can see the signing type, you can see the file. Um, these are just some values that I've gotten from it, but there's more available. Um, the important part is um, that you can see the encryption algorithm. So you can see that we're using two different, um, two different signature algorithms, um, making it a hybrid signature, and both of them are valid. Now, I also have a case where the signature is valid, but the um, certificate that's been used to uh, sign the document is not trusted yet. So that's what the second um, slide is about. Um, to simulate the case where we do not have a trusted uh, root, I've, I've selected a different key store. Um, therefore, we will not have a uh, trusted root. And as you can see in the, um, in the error message, that's also what comes up. So it's not just that, I'm, that we are walking through the happy path, like all the failures also come up um, when you expect them to. Um, and that's where um, we've been working on mostly uh, within this project. And from that, there are also a few lessons learned. Um, firstly, hybrid, um, hybrid certificates are difficult to migrate. Um, I've experienced that myself when I started working with DSS PADES, which is really nice because it works very well if you have one signature and you only have to verify it against one algorithm. If you have hybrid certificates, um, you'll have two signatures, which is not an issue because you can just run it 
two validation operations, one on each. But when you get to the second signature, the one which is post-quantum secure, you will have to check against two algorithms. First, you're checking the normal one, and if that fails, you're checking the one that's in the extensions. And that can be a pain to implement because you're not replacing one algorithm, you're replacing one algorithm by two different algorithms. Um, and that makes it really difficult. And that's also kind of where the crypto agility comes in and where I have where I've experienced firsthand that it's not as easy as it sounds. Secondly, um, when looking at uh, literature, we found that there are many people looking at uh, TLS, which is really nice because it secures a bunch, uh, like almost the entirety of our communications with the internet. However, there are still other standards that do also need attention, including ADES, um, EIDAS, non, other non-internet protocols, um, they also need to be post-quantum secure and they need to ha have attention now because those documents need to be valid for a long, long time and therefore they also have to be secure. And third and last, um, patching your libraries is not enough. Um, the entire ecosystem needs to change which hooks into the crypto agility and that you'll need to plan carefully ahead. Now, the possible future steps that we have, um, well, we have a nice proof of concept, but there are so, still some things that I would like to improve on it and that I would um, make it more robust and integrate it with other PDF readers. That would be ideal. Um, one of the um, Interesting targets for us is ICE PDF, which is also a Java PDF reader. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of pick and choose what we can still do within our budget. Um, and we still have two other possible future steps. One of them is to extend the implementation that we have from PADES also to XADES or CADES, um, which would also be very useful. Um, but well, most likely future step will be open sourcing the DSS fork um, because we think that that's the most, that will have the most impact and hopefully we will be able to convince the people that um, manage DSS to also uh, include it in their repository. And that brings me to almost the end. Um, this was work that has been done within the Hopkido project. Um, more information on the Hopkido project can be found on the website hopkido.tno.nl and we were part of work package 4. Um, if you have any questions you can always reach out to me either via this email address or you can come talk to me or to Alessandro who was also on the project or Gabriele Spini. Um, they have been uh, helping me uh, provide the things uh, that I've shown today. Um, and are there any questions already? Yeah, you can come up to the microphone. Uh, question on uh, uh, the document uh, signing. Yes. Uh, is there, uh, have you tried time scamping it and does it work? The existing time scamping authority. No, that's the nice thing about um, using the DSS service. Um, we only had to um, uh, implement the PADES functionality, and then you also get uh, the additional functionalities of those profiles. Um, so we have implemented it, and we were able to run all the test cases. And in those test cases, there are the uh, happy paths, the unhappy pass, but also all the extensions, including timestamps. So that does indeed work. So let us take your shield. Um, you attach a post-quantum signature extra to the documents, right? Yes. Uh, what is keeping me from just removing this extra signature mm -hmm. and just pretending, oh, this only had a pre-quantum signature from the first place? Um, 
yes, you can do that. But like um, in general, when you sign a document, you get a version that I get a version. So sure, you can remove it from your version, but I can still show that we have a contract um, which has two valid signatures. It, but I'm, if one of the two parties loses this document, then the other one yes. can just completely screw them over. Yes. Okay. But yeah, there's not much you can do about that. That's your own responsibility um, to keep track of it. So it also depends on the kind of certificate that you want to use or how you implement your own infrastructure around it. You can actually make um, the logic of the protocol uh, say, hey, I really want to check both of them. If I do not have both of them, I can, I can just uh, fail the signature and do not verify it. It's not only about the choice of the certificate that helps, but you really have to make the infrastructure understand what is going on. So then you also have to make sure that you don't use the same classic keys for a only classic PKI and only a uh, post quantum yes. PKI because if you mix those two then you can pretend that this message lived in the other world. Yeah, yeah, you have to make you have to make sure of that, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, so composite certificate has this uh, mechanism already in place. If you want to go for Catalyst, uh, you do have to make sure that the uh, ecosystem around, around it understands that it's actually supposed to verify two signatures because you cannot just get it from the, from the certificate itself. No, no, no. That's why I'm saying it, it depends on your choice of the certificate. But yeah, to sort of rephrase it more technically, you haven't investigated any uh, notions of uh, separability uh, in this construction yet. Uh, that's a long. That's a long discussion. Okay, maybe we should have that. Otherwise, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, yeah. First of all, thank you for this um, very nice talk. Uh, I also wanted to ask about this downgrade attack, but I this mm -hmm. you already answered. And um, the other thing you said that you can. Uh, it's hard to replace one signature algorithm by two. Yes. With this composite certificates, are this, is it easier with them? Because for them, I also say it's also easier to, um, to mitigate these downgrade attacks. Mm -hmm. What is um, your experience with I, I don't have experience with that myself. Um, I do notice that the proof is always eating, eating the pudding. It's, uh, it sounds easy on paper, but in general, uh, implementations are currently made in such a way that they only expect one. Um, and whether or not you put it in the extension or you have it in the certificate itself, um, yeah, for the frameworks that do signature services, that generally, um, generally they only expect one. So I do expect that with Composite you will also run into some implementation issues. Talking about uncommunicated assumptions, which is what we are happening here. You, you said you use Falcon 5 Alpha. You yes. Do you use specific hardware, do you want, do you use it? Um, well, currently I'm, uh, I'm requesting from Bouncy Castle to get a Falcon yeah, 512 Yeah, so, so the problem there is that Falcon 512, none of the implementations are safe on either node. Yeah, but to me, should not use it. <laughs> to me, it it wouldn't matter if I'm using Falcon or the lithium or any you of use the, the others. Lithium, please. <laughs> yeah, but but for this proof of concept, that doesn't really matter because until, I can until change. Until someone uses the proof of concept and, and then uses it and then yeah. it's not communicated. So yeah, yeah. but let, <laughs> let's put it this way: <laughs> if somebody wants to use that, the the one that you saw the screen recording of, then I would be surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I, w I would like to give you a suggestion. You're telling uh, to open up more uh, communities for this approach, and you want to put something in open source as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dutch uh, middle tree has paid for uh, part of signatures in uh, the LibreOffice. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not very expensive to do that. Yeah. Uh, so I I want to suggest you to put this also in the Libre. Office environment, mm 
Mm -hmm. The LibreOffice also has uh, labels that are document attributes. They are signed together with the data. Mm -hmm. so you can have extra uh, outputs to other communities. Mm -hmm. Good suggestion. Thank you. Okay, good. So one last question. <laughs> Four. Oh, Kenneth. Okay. Two. Yeah. So I am glad that you attended my my speech yesterday because you saw that this is a, a very important topic, at, and I'm glad that somebody else is addressing it because I I never heard about many people talking about this. By the way, there's a guy from Entrust here who's also working on the same idea. Uh, Giuseppe Bernano, mm -hmm. if you want to talk to him. Um, in the works that we are doing here, um, we are thinking about using Sphinx. And I'm, I was surprised that you were using Falcon because mm -hmm. Falcon is kind of oriented to towards a very specific environment which mm -hmm. doesn't, does not have anything to do with, with signing PDFs. In fact, I think Sphinx really is yeah. is, uh, is is all, all the good things and, and nothing of the bad things of the Sphinx mm -hmm. create an issue here. So are you considering using Sphinx? Or, um, or do you see any issue with, with Sphinx that we have not? not no, I, I do not see an issue with Sphinx in that case. Um, once again, I would like to reiterate that I just picked one of the algorithms that Bouncy Castle provided. Um, I did not put much thought into it. For me, it was about getting a proof of concept to work. Um, but yes, it can be changed to swings. Um, and after the after these suggestions today, I will not pick Falcon for the next demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess uh, using actually DSS and Master Castle, you would have a large amount of crypt agility, I would say, so yes. it would be easy to replace anything. Else. So did we have a, did you have a last question? So we have time for the, the last question. Yeah, okay, good. Just, uh, I didn't know if there was still time. Um, but uh, did you uh, have to uh, hash uh, uh, everything twice? Did you just directly use signatures? Or, or is it the PDF, uh, do you actually hash? Uh, is it a double hash uh, already that it is? Mm -hmm. In, in this case, you are um, double hashing. You're first hashing the document itself. Uh -huh. um, and then you're putting your classical signature on it, and then you're hashing the document with the additional signature again, and that's the input for your second signature. Okay, so the so whole document is, is now hashed. Yes. Twice. yes. Okay. Thank you, Stefan. It was a very <laughs> interesting talk. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.